On today's episode, it's part four of Nick Contrast Fielders. Today, we're looking at dark contrast. And believe it or not, there's one more contrast filter making a total of five. Can you believe that? Five contrast filters in Nick Color Effects. This is a good one. I think you're going to like it. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, it's part four, Dark Contrast. This is a great filter. It's one you have to kind of wrap your head around, but we're going to go over it in some detail today. And by the end of this video, I think you're going to want to try this one out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Nick manual on dark contrast. This filter uses an exclusive technique to amplify details and textures throughout the photo with a denser and more striking rendering. Let's see what kind of adjustments we have in this filter. Well, we have a detail extractor. Let's you control how much detail is accentuated. Increase the value of this slider to amplify details while lightening shadows and tamping down highlights. Interesting. As a result, the tone is distributed more evenly throughout the photo. I'm thinking like it increases the dynamic range. That's my thought. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Have you ever used this filter? I want to know that too. Please comment. I really love to hear from you. There's a brightness adjustment. It's a typical brightness adjustment. Controls the brightness of the overall image. There's a contrast. Again, a typical contrast adjustment. There's a saturation adjustment. Typical stuff. And of course, we have shadows and highlights where we can protect our shadows and highlights as we do in all of the Nick collection. But we'll find out that the shadows and highlight sliders are a big part of this filter, more so than in other Nick filters. Well, let's go ahead and jump right in. I have this image here. It's just a stock image, but this image works really well with this dark contrast filter. And I recommend try it on all of your images. You just never know what kind of results you might get. It's pretty cool. But first, I'll launch the Nick Selective tool. Now, I made myself an action for my My Actions panel in the TK8 plugin for Photoshop right here. Or else, you can come up here to File, go under Automate, and you'll find it right here. Either way, it'll work. I just like this action because I click it, and bang, there it is. I love it. You'll notice under Color Effects Pro 5, you're seeing all my favorited filters so I could get to them quickly. And Dark Contrast is right here, so I'm going to go ahead and click that and we'll fire up Color Effects Pro 5. And we're here at Dark Contrast, but look at the drama in that image. That's pretty interesting. I always like to see my original image so I know which way I want to go with it. So I'm going to come down here to Custom Presets. I made myself, can you guess, a preset where I zeroed out all of the adjustments. So let me go ahead and click this and you can see it's pretty much back to the original. It looks slightly different. I don't know what goes on there, but it's very close. Here's the before and here's the after. But I like to start here because it gives me a clean slate to start from. In case you're wondering, you may be thinking, isn't there a detail extractor in color effects? And yes, there is. But notice something different. This one's called a dark detail extractor. So it's dealing with darker tones. It's going to bring details out in dark areas, which is, as you'll see, pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and play with that dark detail extractor first. I recommend starting there. For me, a lot of the joy of editing is playing around with the really cool editing tools we have. So let's have some fun. Let's start to take this uh, detail extractor, dark detail extractor, and drag it to the right. And you notice those darker areas are getting darker, but there's a lot of detail coming out in them. Let me go ahead. Well, I'm going to leave it there. I'll zoom in later. Let's keep going to the right. Let's push this thing to the max and see what we can get here. I'll take it slowly so you can see, but isn't that really cool? I'm, I'm loving the way that looks. Even at 100%, let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. Look at the drama, man. That is beautiful. But let's decide on a point where we like it. So I'm going to pull it back. Let me know when to stop. Okay. I'm going to say right there looks pretty cool. Now, this is, again, a typical brightness adjustment. And if we want to lighten it up a little bit, let's go ahead and see that. Maybe I'll lighten it up just a little bit. Now, maybe I want to add a little bit more contrast. So let's go ahead and add some more contrast in there. And then we have saturation. We can take saturation out. We can bring a lot more saturation in, whatever we would like. I don't want to go too crazy, but somewhere right around there. So these are just basic controls. But remember, I told you we have shadows and we have highlights. 
So this is where if you're really getting some blocked up shadows, because remember, we're bringing detail out in the darker areas. And when we really amp this up to the right, we may be losing some of that detail. So to get it back, this is where the shadow slider really comes into play. So let me start to drag it to the right. And it's going to really protect those shadows. Now, by default with the initial setting, they have shadows and highlights up the whole way. So let's go ahead and then take our highlights. This will protect highlights. So I'm going to drag it up to the right. And I do find by dragging these up to the right, that's a really good starting point. So maybe in your preset, you may just want to zero these out and leave the shadows and highlights up the whole way. It's totally up to you. Now let me think, am I satisfied with this image? Maybe I'll give it a little more detail extraction. Just like that. And now Amy might just lighten it up very slightly. And then how about just a little bit more contrast? And I'm seeing all my detail. Now let's go ahead and zoom in two to one. So we can really see. Here is the before. And now let's see. Here is the after. But look at all that gorgeous detail in there. I think that looks really amazing. I'm going to go ahead and fit this to screen. I really love how this turned out. Now the sky, I'm not so crazy about. I would like to ease that back on the sky. Now there are control points here in Nick software. I'll be honest with you, I don't use them because you know I use the TK8 plugin for Photoshop and I also, there's all kinds of selection tools inside of Photoshop like uh, sky selection. And then we can invert that and do foreground selection. So I think it's more powerful. And again, if you want to see a video on just control points, I'll be happy to do it. But I don't want to do it here. In these tutorials, I just want to center in on what that filter can give you and how you can use it for your edits. One thing I will say about the dark contrast filter, it's an easy filter to use. It's mainly the dark detail extractor and then just tweaking the brightness, contrast, and saturation and making sure you have those shadows and highlights protected. I'm going to give you another example because this is kind of short, but let's see what it does on a different type of image. When we're all said and done, all we have to do is click apply and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here is the before. The original was a bit hazy and so on. Low contrast. Here's the after. Definitely a nice contrast increase, but we also have a nice detail increase. Now remember, you can take the opacity and pull this back if it's too strong. So there's that. If you have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can apply this to just shadows, midtones, or highlights. And then you can use Photoshop Sky Selection Tool, invert that, and then you could only apply the effect to the foreground. But that's just some of what you can do in Photoshop itself versus using the control points. And again, you may love the control points, and if they're working for you, keep working with them. As an example of the way I like to work, I went ahead and selected the sky and inverted it and applied that as a mask, as you can see in this layer. Now I do not have any of the effect up on the sky, but there's something you can do. If you double click in this mask, you see the properties panel opens up. You see this density slider. If you want to add a little bit of that adjustment back on, you can just take this and start to drag it back. So I can just add a little bit of that in the sky. But this is some of the power of the Photoshop editing tools. And then again, you can incorporate the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with that. But I thought I'd show you that. But here is the before and here is the after. So I just wanted to throw that in for free. It's all free, actually. But you can help me out by liking, sharing, and subscribing. And the other way that helps me is when you use my affiliate links to purchase products. And sometimes I do have promo codes as well to save you some money. One more example and then we'll be done. When I bring this back into Photoshop, I'm going to show you something I can do with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Just to show you how effective it can be. But let's go ahead and launch this. I'm just going to launch Color Effects Pro 5. I'll launch Dark Contrast from my custom presets, and I made another one uh, called Dark Contrast Zeroed Out Highlight and Shadow Protection, so let me click that. It just applies it with the shadow and highlights protection up the whole way. So let's see what we can do. And you can see there is a little change in the image. I'll start with the Dark Detail Extractor to see if we can pull up some darker details in this image. And yeah, that looks pretty good. And let's bring it up to about here. Maybe lighten it up a little bit. Something like that. I'm going a little overboard here, maybe. I might just pull it back. 
Let's see, here's the before and here's the after. As far as saturation, I might give it just a little bit more and the shadow and highlight protection is the whole way up. And so that's basically it. So here is the before and here is the after. Now let me go ahead and save it and I'll show you how we can improve it with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. By the way, every Friday I have TK Fridays where I work exclusively with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. But I just wanna give you a little intro of how effective it can be like this area back in here, if I shut this dark contrast layer off, see this light back in here? I'd like to maintain some of this light in here. And so to do that, what I'll do is, there's a neat little button here for going into what we call layer mask mode. Now, if I click this, what I like to do is I can sample out different luminosity masks to see if I can improve this image. I know it's applying dark contrast, so what I wanna do is only apply it to the darker areas and hopefully let this light area remain in here, or at least most of it. So let me click a darks one. We have these different darks masks, darks one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna click darks one and it adds a darks one mask. Now, as you can see, I'll disable the mask so you can see the difference. Here's the before and here's the after, but see how that detail has come back, not detail, but that light has come back in there just by adding a dark swan mask, which really improves it. Now here's the overall before and here's the after, but you see all the nice detail I brought out in the trees and in the grass and on the kids here. Again, here's the before and here's the after, but I still have a lot of this light back in here. Now, if I wanted more light, I could try a darks too. Let's try darks too it's gonna target darker tones. Now that makes that even lighter. I can even try like a darks three. Okay, here's a before and here's an after. Not quite as strong of an effect, but let me go back to darks two. It's gonna be a lot stronger, but I maintain my light and I think I like that. Again, here is the before and here's the after. So that particular button, I'm gonna X out of here. This button right here lets you sample different luminosity masks. That's really cool. Do you like the dark contrast filter? I think it's exceptional. I love it. I think it's a great tool. Coming up next is the contrast color range filter. You don't want to miss that. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank all of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.